I'm going to talk about uh, our side of the equation, uh, which is the heart equipment, okay, and how we're going to approach this. But I think it all starts with this word that we hear a lot, which is sustainable. Maybe an overused word, but a word nonetheless. But a word that we use in our, our visionary statements, sustainable. But sustainable means different things to different people sometimes. But as a company, and as a company that lives in this environment, we also have to think about it from an environmental point of view, certainly. We also think environmentally. Uh, and, and a company that is not uh, sustainable environmentally, we believe, will falter over time. But also we have to be economically sustainable, like any company. We have to survive, and we have to be able to produce profits in order to invest in solutions that can bring uh, environmental benefits, and at the same time, socially responsible and socially acceptable, okay? So think of a company like Enron. You've all heard of Enron, I'm sure, right? They don't exist anymore. <laughs> they had values on their wall too. But I believe Volvo believes in those values that we have on our wall. And we do that through demonstration with WWF, and our commitment to them, and also a reduction over, over the next three years of a, a specific amount of uh, CO2, and we also did in the last three years. And we, we show our commitment through the climate challenge that we have here today, construction climate challenge that we have here today. But as we talked about earlier, there is a dilemma, and the dilemma starts with growth, right? This year, we'll add another Germany. This year, another Germany will appear, 80 million people on the earth. Right? So we're talking well over 9 billion people now, estimating, right? And growing fast. That growth leads to consumption. I like the billions now. The billions kind of fly around a lot nowadays, right? Lots of billions, right? A billion cars in the world, right? 250 million cars in the United States alone, right? Almost one for every person and child. 94 million barrels of oil used per day. That's an empire state building filled with oil times 14 <laughs> a day, right? Okay, and we talked about concrete earlier. Think about this one for a second. Think of a cube of concrete, right? A cube of concrete. One cube of concrete for every person on the earth is used every year. One cube, right? So that's and in fact, it's like 8 billion cubes of concrete annually, which represents in the total aspect something like 8 to 10% of the CO2 production. So huge amounts. And continuing. And this all has an effect, which we've heard about, whether it's parts per million effect or whether it's uh, water problems or whether it's, uh, it could be almost anything. Everything on this stage today, everything I'm wearing right now, everything that you're sitting on comes from the earth. Everything. Nothing doesn't come from space. And this problem is real, as we've seen, and I'm glad that the Paris talks about it really, really well, because it is very real. So what, will, what are the technology shifts? And I, I like to see these as three axes. So you have the right-hand rule in engineering world. <laughs> but there are three axes here, and it starts with electromobility. Our friend... Uh, in California making these Tesla cars, Elon, I think he has kind of the right idea, right? Just released his new car, the, the third, three series, which is kind of interesting. But we think there's a good idea going on there. Also, intelligent machines. Trilli Today, we're talking about billions of sensors on the Earth that are connected to the Internet. I think IBM has something like 30 billion sensors are connected to the Internet, right? They're saying that this, now we're going to go into the trillions numbers. This enables many machines, buildings, other things to, to bring data. And then we can connect those things, right? Connected machines, the Internet of Things, the Internet of Everything, right? And, and in fact, that will come to machines. But I think what you have to do is think exponential. Think exponential for a minute, okay? Does anybody know Ray Kurzweil? He's the head of Google Engineering. He's like 67 now, right? But uh, he's like a, a, a tremendous inventor. And the way he talks about it is technology is moving exponentially. And we kind of know that. We kind of feel that. But if I walk 30 paces across this room linearly, I get to that glass wall over there. That's how far I get, linearly. 
If I walk 30 paces exponentially, I'm a billion steps away. A billion. So your cell phone that's sitting in your pocket today, do you think it's going to be the same in the next three years? I don't think so. It's going to be somewhere on my body or tattooed or I don't know. But it will move tremendously fast. And so will our machines. So think exponentially. So here we have a typical quarry. Nice little cartoon picture, right? But we have all kinds of machines in here. We have loaders. We have haulers. We have rigid haulers. We have, uh, we have various conveyor systems. But what's that all about? Everything is about energy, about moving this from here to there, right? And how far you have to move it and how effectively can you do that? So it's a very typical quarry. How many of these quarries do you think there are in the world? <laughs> I actually don't even know. But there are thousands and thousands and thousands of these quarries all over the world, okay? All trying to move material. So when we think about this, this process, it's a process like any kind of process, like a manufacturing process. If we look at this process, does it look any different? This is from like 1960. <laughs> does it look any different today? Has it really changed? Is it really just what you see outside today? A truck with a loader putting gravel in the truck, right? And the truck drives away. And it dumps it somewhere else. So have we really conserved any energy in doing so? Maybe a little more efficient engine. You know, maybe we're saving some fuel here and there. But productivity-wise, has it really gotten better? Well, actually not. In fact, it's got worse. <laughs> have any of you had, have any of you had, had some construction in front, of your, in front of your house? Put in a new gas line? Has you, have you noticed that it's gone a lot faster today than it did 20 years ago? Not really. In fact, sometimes we think, this is taking forever, right? So it really hasn't gotten that much better at all. But if you go into an automotive factory, you see a lot of robots, you see a lot of productivity, you see lots of things. And you can see overall, all industries, very well, move very well. But construction is very, not done so well, right? So what does this mean? Opportunity, that's what it means, okay? So here we see some interesting machines. These are some futuristic machines. Of course, I can't show you the real stuff because I'd, you know, be in trouble then. But, but in reality, what we're talking about here is you see a couple of machines here, and you see in this, these machines that they have cabs where a person might sit, but in the one machine, there's no person sitting in it, right? And we believe in order to make a typical quarry much more efficient and the machines more efficient, we want to build an electric site, okay? It's called the electric site, right? We want to use that electromobility, Mr. Tesla, right? Nikola Tesla. That's what we want to use because we think we can get clean electrical energy. And we want to use that energy in the three axes that we're talking about by combining those three axes. So we're talking about clean electric machines, automated machines through their intelligence, and also connected together machines so we can control the site. If you can do this with today, what you'll find with hybrids when you look around in different places, you can get a, a fuel savings gain or an efficiency gain somewhere between 30%. They talk about 20 30%. You might get to 50%. If you work really hard and throw everything at it, you can, right? But that's 50%, right? That's only part of the way with hybrid technologies that you have today. But you can also electrify machines. You can also run a cable, and they do that even today. They run a big, fat cable as big as your arm, 600 volts, to a machine, take out the internal combustion engine, put an electric engine in, as long as it doesn't have to move around too much. It can stay in one place. But you can electrify it, right? So you can do that kind of stuff. But the key is, I make the machine efficient, but what about the site? So if I can get like 30 to 50% out of a machine, can I get more out of the site? And you can, because there's a lot of waste in sites, a lot. Like 30% in the sites. There's a lot to get. So organizing the sites, if you have them connected, you can tell uh, machines to go faster, slower, you can tell machines are going to fail or not. You can do prognostics and find out if they're going to fail, then pull them off, fill in another one. You can be much more productive. So what we think in this design, in our estimates, we believe we can take out 95% of the CO2 in a typical site. 95% in a typical site. And at the same time, 
reduce the total cost of ownership 25%. Okay? Now, we have an agreement with uh, a consortium of, of a group. Uh, one of our partners is Skanska, a, gre a great uh, close customer of ours. Uh, and we were also awarded uh, uh, 65 million sec, I believe it was, from uh, the Swedish Energy Agency to work on this project with Skanska. So we're doing a demonstration project in Sweden, and we're going to try to achieve those goals. Now, we've simulated that already. We think we can get there. Hopefully, we can actually even beat it. And the large goal, because everyone needs a goal, right? The large goal to point everyone in our company in the same direction is we want zero downtime. We want zero accidents. We don't want anybody hurt, inside or out, property or people. We want zero emissions, right? And that might not be always achievable. Sometimes people scoff at it, but I love it because it gets people, all the engineers and everybody moving in the same direction. Zero, man. Never go backwards. Always the right way. And at 10 times the efficiency we have today. A machine that saves 50% in fuel is only two times. I want 10 because 10 is amazing. Right? 10 is amazing. And that's where I want to get to, Terry. Okay? Thanks. Yeah. Are you excited? I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I, it's, it's hard not to be excited with that right, enthusiasm. Good. But, good. but I mean, you made some great points about how the industry, you know, compared to how you might look at a factory, just hasn't yeah. been maybe as advanced and as te uh, technologically advanced. And the electric site really demonstrates that it is possible. What's, what's interesting is I think you, you mentioned how there might be also some cost savings associated with it. Yeah. And I think, you know, something we talk a lot about at the World Green Building Council, you know, it's economically better, it's cost savings. But I think, you know, most companies probably in the room want to know, well, how? How does that work? How is this more cost effective? And so I'd love to just hear your thoughts on, on how does that actually work and, and make it more cost effective for implementation. Yeah, we, we usually talk about it from a, we, we call it TCO or total cost mm. of ownership. So yeah. when, you, when you talk, it, it, it's a good way to talk about it because you really look from, from the total breadth of, of using the machine and the asset, right? So what you're really trying to do is to drive, first of all, you're trying to drive the efficiency to save the cost. So you're not wasting anything. That's mm. the first part of the cost. Uh, then the second part of the cost, for example, uh, when you look at the, co the ownership of a machine, fuel is a huge uh, portion of that cost. Yeah. Like it's a big partial of that cost. So if I can get a uh, 30 to 50 percent uh, reduction in, mm. in, let's say, fuel usage or, or something like this, then I'm, I'm saving on fuel dramatically. And so often uh, operators will talk, or operators or owners will talk about fuel savings, right? So that's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, then if you get, if you push this even farther. If you sort of think, you know, think Airbnb, yeah. you know, <laughs> think this kind of uh, uh, thing, uh, which is, is uh, there's a, a number of books on it. One of the books yeah. is uh, Zero Marginal Cost. Uh, it, it is, it's really what you're doing is you're cutting out a lot of your costs if you can actually use the uh, 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 connectiveness to take out a lot of the middle costs, yeah, right? Yeah, efficiencies, Yeah, it's, it? and it's, it's all like, efficiencies, yeah. right? So, and there's all kinds of really interesting techniques. And if you stretch your mind a little bit on this, you can actually save more there too. So in the site, uh, it's mostly about controlling it, automating it. Automation is another portion of it. The operator is a large part of the cost also. Yeah. So if, the more you can op automate, if you can take it to the nth degree, hmm. the more you can save. So yeah. it's, it's many different okay, bits. Okay, so along that line. Yeah. yeah. It's great because, you know, what, what we really see in so many sectors is that, you know, company like Volvo Construction Products, you need to, you need to take the leadership position, say we're doing this, we're going to make it happen um, first, but then you need to start working through the details and be able to tell the rest of the industry how yeah. it works to kind of bring, bring the rest of them up to speed. So I think it's really great to see how you're doing that. And we're really excited. Um, just before um, this actual panel, we signed an agreement with Volvo Construction Products yeah. where they're going to be joining our corporate advisory board of about 10 companies, which really guide the movement of the World Green Building Council, working across all of our countries to make sure that, that we're constantly pushing the envelope, that we're, we're constantly innovating and making sure that the industry is going where it needs to, do, to go. So we're really excited about this partnership and we're hoping to see these electric sites in every quarry <laughs> around the world, however many there are. We yeah, should count yeah, them yeah, yeah, for exactly. sure. So, so thanks for that.